Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker. My name's Matt. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure a virtual wire on the Palo Alto VM series next generation firewall using ESXi so that you can successfully place a Palo Alto firewall between existing network devices in order to get full visibility and control of traffic traversing your network. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Okay, so what's a good use case? Let's say your company is using a firewall that only filters traffic at layer four and your security team would like to seamlessly integrate a Palo Alto next generation firewall quickly into the network, but technically can't deploy the firewall in the preferred layer three deployment mode. This diagram shows a pair of Palo Alto next generation firewalls being dropped into the existing network, placing the Palo files behind the existing firewalls, which will use two virtual wire interfaces that connect to the upstream existing layer three legacy firewalls and the downstream layer two switching infrastructure. When the firewalls have been successfully deployed, you can start leveraging security policy rules, app ID, content ID, user ID, decryption, LLDP, active passive and active active ha quads and that okay so let's jump into the lab uh, i'm going to show you how to configure a simple virtual wire deployment by using vmware esxi and a palo alto vm50 next generation firewall the diagram shows the existing network topology before the virtual wire is configured I have a Kali Linux client VM connected to a port group called Lab Router Switch LAN 2, which is using vSwitch 7. I also have a virtual router connected to the same port group and switch. The virtual router is acting as a DHCP server and provides an IP address to the client and one of its interfaces is connected to my home network with internet access. So the lab brief is to transparently deploy a pan next generation firewall between the client and the router as if it were a bump in the wire. Because the virtual wire interfaces have no layer two or layer three addresses assigned, when one of the virtual wires receives a frame or packet, it ignores any layer two or layer three addresses for switching or routing purposes. However, the firewall will enforce security policies and NAT policies before forwarding the frame or packet to the connected network devices. Okay, so this diagram shows the proposed network topology where the virtual wire interfaces are connected to their own separate port group and switches. This is because ESXi will not allow you to directly connect a VM to another VM without the use of a vSwitch. Once the virtual wires have been configured and the necessary security policies have been defined, the client PC will still be able to receive a DHCP address from the upstream virtual router and have access out to the internet. This virtual wire configuration will allow us to leverage the Palo Alto next generation firewall security features and have full visibility into all traffic traversing the firewall. Okay, so I've logged into the Palo now. Uh, let's just go through some uh, general settings. So on the dashboard here, we've got the uh, default uh, host name. I've got an IP address here for my management DHCP server. Um, it's a VM50, it's run on the SXI and it's using uh, PanOS 8.1.0. Um, I've already done um, a couple of um, simple configuration changes. Um, it was just that it's, it's pretty boring watching me getting the licenses and setting the time. Uh, but I'll just verify that with you. So click on device um, and under management you can see I've set my time zone to Europe London. And under the services tab, you can see I've set the primary NTP server to um, a UK uh, server address. Um, and then on the licenses side of things, um, I'm running this VM50 um, standard eval license, which gives me all the all the uh, next gen firewall features. So that's pretty much where we are um, with the baseline configuration. I'll just walk you through the tabs. So uh, network at the moment, nothing's configured. Uh, no zones, uh, no virtual wires defined, um, two default policies, the intrazone default and the interzone default. Um, and then on the monitor tab, we've got no traffic coming in. 
Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard. So let me confirm um, that the uh, Kali Linux client has not got an IP address. So let's just log into this quickly and then we can make sure we're ready to go with the configuration. So let's have a look. So what we've got, if I do a, a, an IF config, you can see um, Ethernet zero, which is the only active NIC um, on this VM has not got an IP address. So once we've finished, um, this should get an IP address and we should be able to connect out to the internet. So let's go back to the, the Paolo and let's start configuring the virtual wire. So let's do it. Um, let's go through a sequence of configurations to um, end up with a nice clean virtual wire configuration. So what I do first of all is go to um, network virtual wires and I go to add and I create a virtual wire object, which I call, I normally just call uh, vwire hyphen object. Uh, leave everything else default at this stage. Nothing to change there. Um, and then I go and define a couple of security zones. So uh, let's make a, a outside zone and change the type to uh, virtual wire. And then um, click OK on that. And then we'll make another one for inside. So inside zone. And again, uh, virtual wire, click OK. And now we're going to go up to interfaces and we're just going to tie all this config together. So we're going to go to the outside interface. This is the interface that connects up to the virtual router. We're going to change the interface type to uh, virtual wire. And then we're going to assign the interface to the uh, uh, VY object and also the outside security zone. And then do the same process for Ethernet 1 slash 2, which is the inside. So we go to interface type vWire, virtual wire, virtual wire object, um, security zone inside. So basically this virtual wire object uh, binds the two interfaces together. So one slash one and one slash uh, two um, is effectively one piece of string that joins the client to the, the router. Um, and this, this firewall will just be a bump in the wire. Um, so click OK on that. So at that point, that's the virtual wire configuration done. Um, what we need to do then is just go into the policies and create a couple of um, couple of policies for inside to outside and outside to inside. Um, the reason I do outside to inside um, is because we're using DHCP te to test the um, the actual configuration. Um, these rules will be pretty permissive um, and I wouldn't do this in a production environment this is just for demonstration purposes so let's make two rules configure two rules so inside to outside source source interface um, source zone is inside and uh, destination zone is outside application any service application default actions allow and then we we'll log any traffic that comes through. So log session at end. Okay, and let's create another one. And this time it's going to be outside to inside. And it's the opposite way around. So now it's outside zone destination inside zone application any service application default actions allow and log at session end so now we've got effectively a bi-directional rule allowing traffic originating from um, both network devices in the topology so that's that configured we're going to just commit those changes um, and wait for that to uh, to commit to the box shouldn't take too much too long and, and then hopefully when we go to the monitor tab start seeing some traffic um, come through so so let's just verify both the interfaces are are up they're using the vy object the security zone is the outside on the ETH one slash one and inside on one slash two 
we've got two policies in place. Um, as you can see now, the hit count is incrementing um, on both of the uh, security policies and hopefully we'll have some some traffic coming in so we've got traffic coming in so now we can go and verify that the Kali uh, Linux uh, client has got an IP so if we just up our there IEF config so as you can see 172.16.10.3 that's the IP that the virtual router has given the client let's do a couple of connectivity tests so let's ping uh, 8.8.8.8 that's good. So we've got access out to the internet. Let's do a quick, uh, let's go to a, a web page. So let's do a wget https uh, google.com. That's good. And then let's do a wget http uh, google.com. That's good. Um, and w, let's do a wget uh, www bbc.co.uk and there you go so we've got full connectivity out so now let's go back to the Palo and let's have a look at the monitor tab yes um, we can increase the how many logs it's going to display on the page so I'm just going to put 100 on there refresh it a few times to see what's see there the new traffic coming in and then if by clicking on one of the hyperlinks, so this is um, the IP address of the Kali Linux client. So if I click that and then just hit return, that filters all the traffic sourcing from, so address source 172.16.10.3. And you can see the destinations. So sourcing from the Kali, right, going out to the internet. And you can see that the Palo is now um, identifying the different types of applications. So this is given full visibility. Um, you can see all the traffic that's traversing through the firewall. The firewall's in place transparently. Um, um, it's not been involved in any layer two, layer three um, processes at all. It's just enforcing uh, security policies and it's giving you a really good insight to what traffic is traversing the network. So that's it, that's, that's the lab complete. It's uh, been a successful demonstration. Um, if you've ever uh, configured a virtual wire, um, please let me know how you got on and how you've implemented it, you know, for what reasons, is it just for a lab or was it at work for your company? I'll be uh, happy to hear your, your comments and your feedback. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Over the next coming weeks, I will be uploading more videos where I will be sharing more content about Palo Alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them. If you like this video, I'm sure you know what to do by now, but just in case you don't, please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.